There we go. All right, Sue, whenever you're ready. I think your mic is off, Sue. We'll trim this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> OK. OK, unmuted yeah. myself. Um, whoops, I need to go to the to the picture myself. Ha. <laughs> the one thing we didn't check I had set up, right? It's all good. Um, ooh. There. Okay. So from the from the link, I, the view that I'm going to be drawing is if you zoom in just a little and then scroll up so you can see the arch and the arch is in the center upper third of the screen. But you can obviously move it around and draw it any way you like. Um, so. I love how you sharpened that pencil. <laughs> oh, yeah. Too much time on my hands, maybe. No, I really <laughs> like having the ultra long um, point on that pencil. So Tombow markers for everything. These three, it's a, like a mustard color, a light yellow, and a dark purple. Um, I really just use them as value markers. The colors just, I like them, but they have no particular relationship to the scene. Um, and because they're watercolor, I've started to learn to go from light to dark. Um, because if I don't, the whole drawing just becomes a nice smeary mess. Um, and I started using these because they're just so convenient to take outside and so fast to use. And then now I've become kind of addicted. Yeah, I love those the big fat brushes. Yeah, the markers I really loved. This is the story of your favorite thing being discontinued, but the uh, the big markers that Faber Castell used to make that were pigment. I love those. Oh, bad day they were gone. Huh. They, um, I guess they still make them in the small, like a smaller size, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. They stopped making those, huh? Yeah. Which, one did they, which ones did they stop making? The, the large pigment markers. And I've heard rumors that they're bringing them back, that they kind of redesigned them, but I have not seen them anywhere in the US anyway, shops that I have. Like the only ones that come to mind are the pit pens. They are, yeah, the pit pens. Yeah, the big they brush. Still make a little one. Ah, they, they were like these small, chunky ones. Do you mean those? They were. I have one because I still have the stash of sky yes, blue. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, right. They discontinued those. And mm -hmm. yeah, I still have a Who's stash. Your favorite? They were well because they're permanent. They're light fast, you could draw over them. Um, 
yeah, I really love those. Apparently Staples has them on their online store. Really? This, no. this is a yellow one. Maybe people are using it as a highlighter or something, like a really, really nice highlighter. Yeah. And there's like some really interesting information information in the chat from Uma. Oh, um, really? Don Collie would know if they are bringing them back. Oh. He's a Faber-Castell representative. I, lo I love this crowd knowledge. Like mm -hmm. nerdy art <gasps> supply knowledge. I have, yeah, I know Don has, I follow him and I know he has a little stash of them, but he he's using lately, it seems like the watercolor markers. And I think he's probably the sor my source of this rumor that they were going to bring them back, but I haven't found them. Let's see. So, I really love this mustard yellow shade. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure how to call that, but it's a really nice shade. Well, Tombow doesn't put color names on They have them, but they just put numbers. It's 026. Um, but yeah, it's really nice for just a middle value and it's a little more fun than standard gray, which had kind of become my mm -hmm. fallback. It suits the New Mexico landscape too. It does. All right. So that's kind of like if I was outside drawing at this point and my subject got up and walked away or a big truck parked in front of me, I, <laughs> I've got enough information there that I could finish this. And that's partly why I started drawing this way, kind of just working from light to dark, biggest shapes to littlest shapes. And um, and uh, kind of starting right away with whatever's gonna be most important to me, whatever, whatever my center of interest is, not that it's in the center, but that I get that shape down first. Um, and because now I, like I could finish this at home. I could finish it pretty quickly on location um, because now it's really just adding detail from here. Let's see. And, and I kind of will go back and forth from line to just adding big dark shapes in. And it's basically, so with the mustard, it's like everything that's not white, not going to be white at the end of this drawing is now covered up. Um, it has some color on it. Do you ever use these Tombow markers and add water to them? Because they're um, like water soluble. Yeah. I know. Yeah, they are. And I never do. I know. It's like I'm not even using them the way they're intended. I, and it'd be really yeah. happy if they were not water soluble, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, what I love about them is the big fat brush. Yeah. Um, and I do actually like the uh, the drawing with that bullet tip on the other end. Uh, it's fine enough that I can do a nice line, but it's not fine enough that I end up getting fussy and getting into too much little detail. Yeah, totally. It's still, it's like really fillable. 
Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's totally, I can throw it in my bag and not worry about it leaking all over or mm -hmm. um, leading into something else. So, let's see. So, Sue, I have a question. Um, sure. Are you, um, uh, it looks like you're, you are drawing, you are now going to start drawing a lot of those um, marks and stuff in this, in the rock, um, as opposed to filling in these shapes as a value, more value, or can you talk about your strategy here for these marks you're making? I, I can see you're following these, some of the lines, but some of the lines are more like, they're not light anymore. They're just like darker rock. So right. uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, I think now at this point, I'm Kind of putting in some there's some of these fissures and cracks in the rocks that are maybe not black but i'm giving some of the they're i feel like they're really important directional lines in this that they're they're pulling hopefully they're pulling people's attention to this little arch and the the little gap of sky up here um and it a certain point I do start using it, it actually I'm just probably there this is where I kind of start going back and forth between the the small tip and the large tip on the brush pen um this scene's not got as much dark super dark in it as some as some probably not going to use the fine or the large tip of the brush as much as I do sometimes, but um, I just go back and forth at this point between line, adding texture, building up more tone with the, with the line, um, and then areas of really good dark solid. But I was amazed that as soon as you drew a line around that that hole or that little canyon under the hole, mm -hmm. uh, it suddenly pushed it way back, and now it's a hole and not just a mark on the wall. Right. That was amazing. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, it became like the focal point became so clear just from that dividing line. Yeah, those. Thanks for asking that question, Tina. I'm still, we practice rocks a lot in this, in Street View, but I still find it very challenging. I'll say also that when I put down that mustard color, I don't worry too much about the direction of my strokes. And this may be a little bit of a cheat, but um, I let them be kind of random. And at this point I'm drawing rocks, which are also, you know, this very organic kind of thing. And in some way, some places where they work, I'm kind of, tracing those marker strokes to create if they happen to follow the planes of the rocks in that area um oh that's a great hack yeah and And I always feel like there's like this really ugly period where, <laughs> wow, this is never going to work. But I also have kind of found that if I just keep keep going, yes, the ugly phase is real. Yeah. You're holding, you're holding the pen in an interesting way just now. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying not to cover all of my mustard back here, but I, I am trying to 
dark in the back, maybe more than the photo really looks in order to push that back wall here back farther. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this little sliver of, I haven't got the shape quite right, but there's this little sliver of light hitting one face of this rock. And there's this nice tree here. Yeah, I love how you're you're not staying so um, beholden to the values in the reference image because it is pretty all the same, but you're really separating those layers out. Yeah, I'm trying to stay close to them, but I would say I'm pushing them. Like if it's dark, I might make it darker than it really looks. Um, just to get some depth in there. Also in the chat, good news. The chat is on fire today. <laughs> about the pit pens, good news about the pit pens. There's gonna be a new version of them. The Faber-Castell pit artist pen big brush nib has returned only now it has its little cousin the bold 8.8 millimeter nib attached to the other end it's called pit artist pen dual marker so it Ooh. sounds like it will be similar to the the tombow that will be that will make me a very happy camper actually if i could they should have asked me before they finished this project and design these. If I could have had my wish, and I know everybody has their uh, their dream art product, yeah. the Tombow pen body with the ink of the Faber Castell pen, that would be. <laughs> I a hundred percent agree because, like, when it comes to this kind of like brush pen marker thing, I really like Tombow best. Like the brushes are the best, just the ink is the problem that it's not pigment based, but dye based. Right. And if they had pigment based ink, it would be the best brush pen on the market, I think. Mm -hmm. I actually, if they would just make the black even mm -hmm. in a pig, both. We want so little. Yeah. We're not asking for that much. Yeah. I'll compromise. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this up here, I don't want it to get too dark. And it might. And there's this. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I think there's like trees or something right at the top. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, Sue, do you have a maximum number of colors you like to use in your drawings? Well, like when I was doing these with gray, I really just use the black and the middle grades uh, of the Tombow. And that had been it for a long time. Oh, most of the winter, I was just drawing with those two things. Not necessarily everything I was carrying because I have a bazillion art supplies, but that ended up being what I did most of my drawings with. Um, when I started playing with replacing the like the middle gray with the uh, colors and using other stuff then it became three a, a really light one are these on the screen i can't tell a really light one the middle one and something dark um but that's really it because i'm not using them as color per se you know mm -hmm. I'm, they're not representational colors 
uh, let's see, there's this gigantic rock here and maybe it's time to do something about these rocks down here. Yeah, I also forgot you were using purple and not a black. Do you like that? Because it has like more depth to it when layering it on yellow? Yes, it somehow it, uh, you know, it just looks more interesting. And actually I get kind of two tones out of it where it goes over the yellow, it makes a different color because they all bleed together and they're water soluble. Um, but it uh, makes this different color. And then, then I have areas where it's just on the, the paper and it's, it's more purple. I hope I'm not the only one who has trouble making a coherent sentence. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm... drawing and talking at the same time is hard, but you're doing yeah. very well. Yeah. We have now put many people through this ordeal and it always worked out fine. <laughs> again rocks down here rocks are they don't have a specific shape so that sometimes sometimes they're kind of hard to make it look like a rock and this is where i sometimes i'm just kind of tracing those marker lines on here to if they sort of seem to follow the planes of the rock let's see this is really reminding me of the session we did on rocks. And then we had a rock scientist in the group. I don't know. That is, of course, not, not an official title of someone, a rock scientist. But there was mm -hmm. the, like really a lot of geology knowledge in the group as well. That was so fun. Yeah. I want to do another rock session. Yeah, but fun. I think not, we're not at the point yet where we can repeat themes. Mm -hmm. There's still so much to draw. Yeah, this is only the 14th session. Yeah, but it's oh. getting up there. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm like Ooh. rocks in the photo are actually pretty much as dark as the arch. But I'm going to leave them lighter. And again, it's, it's just trying to exaggerate maybe the layers of depth so you can, so that becomes a little clearer. Um, how am I doing for time? Oh, I didn't check. I think you're, uh, yeah. You're... Do you know the time, Eleanor? I didn't no, check. I forgot to, no. but. I think we, I think, well, I can figure it out. Because at this point, I'm, I mean, at this point, it's, you can just keep going until you're done uh, with this. The, to me, at this point, I've captured everything I need to. I can, uh, if I was sitting out there on a hard, uncomfortable rock, sketching this in real life, then you're done. If you're sitting I, on a cushion, you, yeah, you could fine. go on forever. It might be the kind of thing that I got up, took a look, walked around, took a look at it again. Maybe there'd be some things that I would come back and fill in, but I've gotten the basics of this. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we've done about 20 to 25 minutes yeah. now. It's been 25 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, can you just talk a little more about your, like what you're thinking about with this sky hole? Um, so basically to me, I when I talk about composition, I haven't taught a class since before COVID, but when I would, when I was teaching classes, I would try talking about value shapes and negative shapes. And, and the minute you say negative shapes, I would just see people's eyes glaze over, <laughs> uh, you know, like, like it's a car, it's a tree, it's a whatever. What are you talking about negative shapes? And to me, I hope that this is, this is a subject where the main attraction of this scene and the other scenes we're gonna look at 
is not a thing. It's a whole through other stuff. And so I'm hoping that like, once people start seeing this shape, this shape that's just space behind something else, you start seeing them everywhere. And maybe that idea of negative space starts clicking with people um, that we're, and just seeing that how this drawing got built from, you know, basically the big orange mustard colored shape, um, gets people thinking about looking for value shapes when they're picking something to draw more than, or as much as the actual subject of whatever it is they're drawing. Um, hopefully it's like kind of an introduction to space shape design. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. When it's- It looks beautiful. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. I'll end the recording.